The U.S. Navy appears to be leaning toward developing a new, advanced fast-attack submarine that focuses more on hunting maritime threats above and below the waves than on standoff strikes against targets ashore. The decision would reflect growing concerns about Russian and Chinese submarine activity, but could come at a steep price of more than $5 billion per sub. Specifically, the Navy indicates that the next-generation attack submarine should be faster, stealthier, and able to carry more torpedoes than the Virginia class, similar to the Seawolf class submarine, CBO's analysts wrote in their review. CBO therefore assumed that the SSN in X would be a Seawolf-sized SSN, which displaces about 9,100 tons when submerged and would have an all-new design in keeping with the Navy's description of it as a fast, lethal, next-generation attack submarine. In 1983, General Dynamics Electric Boat began designing the Seawolf class for the Navy as a successor to the Los Angeles-class attack submarine. Significantly more advanced, the Seawolves were also much costlier to build. Their unit cost of more than $3 billion, closer to $5 billion, made them the most expensive attack submarine ever designed and the second most expensive submarine of any kind ever at the time. The first of class the Seawolf was ordered from the Electric Boat Division of General Dynamics Connecticut U.S in January 1989 and commissioned in July 1997. The ship was modified to improve payload carrying and underwater maneuverability. The alterations to the design included modifications to the ballast control, mission management spaces and the creation of a flexible ocean interface known as a WASP waste, which enabled the deployment and recovery of payloads without the use of torpedo tubes. The Seawolf was a product of the Cold War, conceived to maintain the USA's acoustic advantage over Soviet submarines. With the end of the Cold War and the change of emphasis to littoral operations, the cost of the Seawolf submarines was judged prohibitive and the program was curtailed in favor of the smaller and cheaper Virginia-class new attack submarines. With the apparent need for the boats gone after the end of the Cold War, the United States canceled the program in 1995 and ultimately purchased just three of the 29 examples it had originally planned to buy. The Seawolf-class submarines have since been assigned a number of secretive special duties that make good use of their enhanced performance and deep-diving capabilities, which make them particularly well-suited to operations under the ice in the increasingly strategic Arctic region. The last example, the USS Jimmy Carter, also received significant modifications to operate as a spy submarine. Based on information the office received from the Navy and its own analysis, the new submarines will have space for 25 additional weapons in the torpedo room compared to the existing Virginia class, for a total of 62 weapons, and could leave out the VPM entirely. CBO's review noted that this could allow for additional torpedoes or tomahawks, but it could also allow the submarines to carry torpedo tube-launched anti-ship missiles. A submarine with a revised bow design able to hold more torpedoes could also point to a design with more torpedo tubes in total. The Virginias only have four torpedo tubes, while the Seawolves have eight. Concerns about increased Russian and Chinese submarine activity seem to be the primary drivers behind the Navy's renewed desire for a Seawolf-like boat and raises the question of whether it has turned out to be a short-sighted decision to cancel that program in the first place. The U.S. government focuses heavily on great power competition and the potential for large-scale conflict against nearly equal adversaries in the latest official national security and defense strategy. China, eager to move beyond being a regional power, is also stepping up its submarine activity. 
Though Chinese submarine activity in the Atlantic may be limited, that they're operating there at all reflects a significant shift in how the People's Liberation Army Navy plan operates and a new challenge to America's long-standing naval supremacy along its eastern seaboard. Regardless, China's submarine fleets are growing and will continue to present a significantly more pronounced threat throughout the Pacific and potentially elsewhere, as the plan continues to transition into a force with global reach. A new advanced American attack submarine could definitely help in countering these challenges, but it's also unlikely to come cheap. By the Navy's own estimates, the SSN-X unit cost will be approximately $3.1 billion, which would be cheaper than the price point for the Seawolves when adjusted for inflation. However, CBO is warning that this cost estimate may no longer be valid, since the Navy based it on the premise of buying a submarine design derived largely from the existing Virginia class. If the service's requirements demand more extensive modifications or a clean sheet design, this could significantly raise the cost of the program, with the average cost per sub possibly coming out to around $5.5 billion, closer to what a new Seawolf would cost today. It could also increase the strain on already overworked shipyards to actually build the boats. SSN and Gex is only one part of the Navy's growing plans to revitalize its anti-submarine warfare capabilities. This push also includes unmanned surface and undersea vessels, surface ships and maritime patrol aircraft with new weapons and sensors, and improved communication systems and data links to quickly share this information between assets at sea and in the air. There are also plans for increased cooperation with NATO allies and other U.S. partners on anti-submarine warfare capabilities will be able to work together more seamlessly in a multinational setting.